my followers, my Facebook followers <laughs> have gone to 79,000 followers, man. I repeat, this ad is not for vegans. It's amazing. Not, not from just that incident, but man, I had a couple of videos that went viral in the UK. So good. <laughs> Fuck, man. This is Legends with Bevo. Thanks to Bet Odyssey, Renelec Electrical Services, and Anytime Fitness Glenelg. And now, here's your host, Bevo. Well, what a pleasure on Legends with Bevo tonight to be joined by Johnny, the man who's going absolutely gangbusters around Australia and around the world, the fruit and veg man himself. He is from St. Bernard's Fruit and Veg Shop. 14 years he's been in charge, and recently he's been going crazy through his videos. And, mate, great to have you on the show. <laughs> Don't fuck with me, man. I, I can't. I'll chop you up. <laughs> Talk to me, mate. Let's go. It's hard to have a serious conversation with I'm a guy. I'm on a busy schedule. Let's when, go, when you have these videos and you've just got, you've got managers now, you've got people overseas wanting to you know, get involved with you. Your social media is going gangbusters, as I mentioned. You've been on Channel 7. Everyone knows who you are now. But um, when, would it, when did it really start to, to go off? You know, when was that, that real turning point? The yeah. first, mate, I, I, I can't quote you on the time. I reckon it was about two years ago probably maybe a little bit longer than two years, I posted um, a ad on Audi with my trombone and basically said that I'm going to shove this trombone where the sun don't shine. And my South Aussie with Cozzy posted it. Shit Adelaide posted it. My Insta followers just went, mate, I think we picked up 10,000 followers in 24 hours on Insta from Shit Adelaide. It just went viral. And ever since then, that was the catalyst, mate. That was the, where it went, boom. And it just hasn't, hasn't gone backwards from then. When did you get this idea to start doing these funny social media posts? Uh, where did the idea come from? The idea come from, man, look, um, I've got fat fingers and I'm shit on the phone, man. I'm really bad on typing the phone. So this is how it all started. And this is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So... I had like 20 specials, man. So I was going on Facebook, putting one photo up, right, or five photos, whatever, and then I was writing each individual special. We're talking 20 specials plus prices plus whatever else I wanted to write. It was taking me like an hour to do one post. Capsicums, $1.99 a kilo. Eggplant, $1.99. And I was going nuts. So anyway, I was running really short on time one day, so I've grabbed my shop manager, I said, Nino, I said, listen, man, I said, it's taken way too long. I said, what I'm going to do is try something different today. Let's walk around the shop. You record me. I'll tell them the price. We'll do the whole segment in two minutes, right? And they can actually see what they're getting as well, the quality. So we're walking around the shop saying, and my first video, I've actually still got my first, first video. And, mate, the response I got on that video was, very good. Everyone's here like, wow. I said, fuck. Next week, we done the same. It started going more and more views, more and more likes, picking up followers. Anyway, it wasn't until about probably maybe a month or so, I'd done an ad and I was a little bit crazy. I had a walking stick. I had a wig on. Started hitting my head with a walking stick saying we got crazy, crazy specials going. Mate, that tripled in likes, views, so forth. And I said, wow, that's a, this, this is the start of the beginning. So what I'd done, I was sitting at home one day and I had bananas and they were going to be half price to everyone. 99 cents. Everyone was on like $1.99, $2.99. I'm sitting on the toilet one day and I'm thinking, fuck, hang on a minute. I'll shave my head and beard half. And go on the social media and promote I've got half price bananas. That was the end. It went fucking boom. The response. So let's just say my best video was getting, say, 10,000 views. That one got like 80,000 views. Amazing, man. And then that's, then I knew these guys just want fucking crazy shit. And it was something different, Bevo. It was something different that no one had done. And even to this day, people are still saying, like, I'm the pioneer of nut advertising on social media. Do you know what I mean? Like, it, 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 it was completely out of character, completely out of spec. No one's done that. Now there's this guy in Italy, he does the same thing. He goes, he smashes things, you know, dresses up on his head. 
you know, it was, I think, I was a part of the beginning of that. You know, that's what I honestly think. You know, I don't want to put tickets on myself, but, you know, that crazy advertising has worked. It's worked for the shop. And a lot of people were saying, Bev, mate, you're a fucking idiot. You should be ashamed of yourself. You're a tool. You're embarrassing. But, mate, not only did my socials go up, my shop tripled in turnover as well. There you go. Like tripled. Like you said, I guess it's, um, it's not for everyone, but the majority of people love it. And, and that's social media, isn't it? 100%. So you've got, you're always going, to get, always going to get your keyboard worries, the idiots always. out there, and you just got to ignore them. I mean, I get it. My, my videos too, people criticise it, but you just got to ignore them, and most people love it. So, and um, that's, yeah. that's shown by the following and as the amount of people. As, as so. long as your percentages are right, like you say, let's just say 80% like, 20% dislike, that's fine. It's when the tables have turned, then you know you're doing something wrong. You know what I mean? Then you've got to sort of, you know, at one stage, I went through a bit of a period there where I thought, shit, am I doing the right thing? But I went nuts, man. Like, I've done shit like, I don't know if you've seen my ads, like wet pussy specials, like the floor's wet, I'm slipping over. I've got ah. the wet floor signs out. You know, the chicks are going crazy here, fucking. Just, man. And it got a massive response. There was a lot of haters there, but that much compared to that much how many people loved it. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And, and the thing is, the yeah. haters are probably people that are probably just jealous. You 100%. Know? And, yeah. and you just ignore those sort of people because yep. most people love it and that's the most important thing. 100%. So, and, and yeah, you're just you and that's that's what we love. And and is there has there been sort of a time where you thought, oh, I'm, I'm going to offend someone here or you just honestly just don't give a stuff and just love what you're doing? I'll go full steam ahead. My ads and my wife's here to clarify this. My ads, I used to say to my wife and my mother-in-law, because she works at the shop as well, I'd say, Leander, I'm going to do this on this commercial. You're a fucking idiot. What would you do that for? So that was the response I was looking for, right? So the more she disliked the ad, the better I knew. And then, mate, guaranteed I'd post that ad, boom. Ratings went through the roof, you know. No matter, I would always ask them, and then if they said, Yes, yeah, that's good. Then I know, nah, it's going to be a shit ad. If they said, don't do that, you're an idiot, I knew it was going to be successful. And she's right there to clarify that, mate. Hey, hey, chicky. Hey? Hey? Um, obviously, you've been involved for 14 years with the fruit and veg side of things. What is it about your job that you love to, you know, to, to be doing it for such a long time? And is it something you've always been doing, being involved with fruit and veg? Yeah. Mate, my, my grandfather, um, he's been, like, he came here in, I think, 1948 or 1950, there and abouts. And first thing he done was uh, growing tomatoes. Then he was selling his tomatoes in Melbourne. So the, the fruit and veg has been in the blood since early 50s, yeah? So I wasn't academically smart at school. I was pretty hopeless. I just didn't want to be there. So I said to my dad, look, Pull me out of school as early as possible. I went and worked on the farm. To be honest with you, I wasn't super keen on working on the farm. Um, went, moved to Melbourne, right? And I'd done my apprenticeship um, in the wholesale markets in Footscray. Absolutely loved it. My passion for fruit and veg actually came oh, when I was in Melbourne for 10 years. Done 10 years at Footscray Market. Mate, was, me, was just a turning point where I said, mate, this is my life fruit and veg. Cut a long story short, um, ended up leaving from there. My wife wanted to come back um, uh, to Adelaide. So um, uh, we came back to Adelaide and I said to the missus, I said, man, I said, look, we've sold our house and I've told this story to many people. We've got this much money profit left from our house that we sold in Melbourne. What do we do? My passion always was pizza bars and veg. So had a good chat with my old man, my wife, so forth, and, and they said, look, maybe you should do the fruit because you've got contacts. And I said, yeah, that's probably the smartest thing to do. So we tied up the shop where we're at now, St. Bernard's, and we done the fruit shop basically there. And now that I mentioned the pizzas, we've actually got a pizza bar in there as well, knocking out thousands of pizzas a week. Unreal. So I got, that's why, that's why I just love my shop so much, man, because it's two things I've always wanted in my life, and that's two things under one roof with me every day. And you're obviously a people person as well, which you, you naturally love. I'm pretty good with people, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a lot of people think, you know, like they see me on the video, they don't see me like this. 
You know, they think, mate, you, you're a fucking lunatic. You're on drugs. You're on this. You're on that. Uh, man, that's just all hype, man. That's just all hype, man. When I'm in front of the camera, the horns come out. I change. Camera stops. I go back to normal, man. I'm a family man at the end of the day. I'm a good businessman. I'm a very good family man. And, mate, I've got passion. And not only passion, I've got love for the community, man. We do heaps for the community. And that's, that, that, that there, Bev, is not for um, advertising. It's not for fucking media, fucking to say, oh, yeah, you know, he's uh, full of shit. He just does it for attention. Mate, that, that comes from the heart, you know? Wonderful. Well, we're actually doing a new thing uh, we're, we're putting on board now. I'm liaising with the Campbelltown Council. Uh, he came past one day and he goes, Johnny, he goes, look, he goes, there's, he was going to do some sort of like a campaign for kids. And then I thought about it and I said, mate, I can't remember his name. I said, but bro, I said, look, I know there's a lot of houses around the area in Campbelltown and that where uh, yeah, housing trust homes. I see a lot of, I see a lot of kids and I've heard um, from teachers at Moriota, uh, Moriota school because we used to supply them. And she goes, there's a lot of hungry kids here. I said, well, why don't we join forces? You put on your page, the council page, that um, we, you can come to St. Bernard's if you're a hungry kid and there'll be rolls made up there for you, half a pizza or a drink. So that's our new campaign. And that's not, that's not for... That's because if I was hungry as a kid, I'd be shattered, man. I'd be... Sh mate, like, fancy now going home. You're starving. I remember when I used to come home from school, man, and I used to go straight in that pantry and make six toast with cheese and Vegemite straight away, man. Six pieces of bread. And I was starving after school. So I'd go home and I'd eat. I Imagine that, that kid sure. there now. Imagine that kid, <laughs> yeah. that hungry kid is going home now. He opens that fucking cupboard and there's no bread and butter in there. Or no cheese. The kid's starving, man. You know what I mean? Absolutely. That yeah. rips me. And I put myself in that position, man, and it, it, it burns me. It burns me. And I wish I was a fucking trillionaire and I would just, and mate, and it's truth, I, would give, mate, I, would, I, would, I wouldn't let no one go hungry, man. Amazing. Because it's, people that's like how you it is, man. Well, no, but that's fucking true, bro. That's yeah. how everyone has to be. Always put yourself in their shoes. Yeah, so true. So at least now I know, and this will take a while for it to kick off, and do you know why I want to say it and push it and say it? So the more kids hear about it. Right. So the more kids that come to my shop to get that roll or a pizza because they're fucking starving, that's going to make me happy. And oh, you think I'm going to sit there and worry about 30, 40, 50 bucks a day? Absolutely fucking lootly not, man. That's awesome. Absolutely and I, I can not. see your genuine passion. and, oh, and, mate, and, and off. Yeah. There is this complete persona, like you said, on social media. There's the the outlandish Larrick and Johnny, but inside yeah. you've got your real teddy bear, man. That's fantastic. That, so, that's a hundred percent, man. Yeah. And that's that's fully legit. Love it. You just got to sort of put yourself in other people's shoes and yeah. and hope for good karma comes your way. So yeah, I totally yeah. agree with that. It's it's just mate. It's it's like uh, mate, a hung to see a hungry kid. Look, the ones in America, South America, uh, Africa, this and that. There's you know, you, you can say they sit there and donate money, 30 bucks, sponsor a kid. Does the money go there? That's right. I know if I control something and I see a kid coming in and says, oh, man, oh, can I have one of those free rolls? That's made my day. Brilliant. That's made my day because I can see where my money went into that kid's mouth because he came here because he was hungry. And, that's, and you've done the right thing. And you know how does I mean? that make you feel as well? That's, that's what everyone needs to do for their community, man. Love it. You know, and I'm hoping, to be honest with you, that if this takes off, right, and it gets, you know, a very good response, man, I, I've got a lot of connections around Adelaide, man, where I can say, okay, let's make, a, let's make 20 points around Adelaide to feed hungry kids. Advertise it, as, advertise it flat out and say, here, across Adelaide, there's 20 stations where there's X amount of food there ready for kids, hungry kids, to go there and eat. Mate, Legends of Bevo will be 100% there promoting it for you, mate. You know so, what I mean? Yeah. That's, that's what I want to look at doing. Fantastic. You know? And yeah. I don't care if I have to supply all the fucking food for it. It doesn't bother me. Love it. Need more people in the world like you, Johnny. I love it. Fantastic. Where to from here, mate? Obviously, you know, you're killing it with your socials. Um, what's the plan going forward now? 
What do you want to do? I'm fucked, Bev. I want to retire. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, man. I'm knackered, bro. I mean, I've this year's really taken the bloody juices out of me, man. Like, uh, we had we had four shops at one stage, uh, probably about five years ago, and it was just me and my wife, bloody managing these shops, and and it mentally, I think, fucked us. And just took all the juices out of us. And I think just it's starting to take its effect now. We're just tired. You know, um, that's how I feel. But tomorrow could be different, man. The other option is, yes, I want my shops to go Australia-wide. But I'll, I've got a couple of things in the pipe works with some maybe might look at some private investors maybe that later on the other track. And I'm talking like open up four shops in Adelaide, one north, south, east, west, but megaplexes. More you know? social media videos too? <laughs> Mate, I just want to open those shops. I want to get people, very good people to manage them. And I just want to concentrate on social media for that is easy for me. For me to go to somewhere, do a commercial, um, promote my specials is fine. But the shops need to be in fine tune you know what i mean yeah I do. that's my ultimate <laughs> goal don't ask me on a time frame it's it that's either going to happen or i'll be retired that's it do you sort of come up with the ideas yourself like with your samurai sword one we'll speak about in a moment yeah, but mate, um, i can be watching a tv uh, movie and i'll say oh that's good i'll quickly go and get my pen i'll write it down so in one of my pads i've got like just a whole heap of ideas awesome so if i see it like even talking here, you you might say something that'll spark me. I'll go and type it, send it to my wife, and say and send it in a message so so I don't forget it because I've got a really bad memory, man. And I forget straight away. I'm the same, mate. I always carry a notepad with me now because it's just always. Have to. I'm always driving. It takes me forty minutes to drive to work every day. I'm I'm always just thinking of things, and then as soon as I as soon as I pull over, I just put everything like either on a notepad or in my phone. <laughs> you, sometimes there's some great ideas there. I mean, look, obviously I've got my banter with Audi. That, that there just comes in naturally. I just want to go there and hammer the fuck out of them. You know, and, and not because I hate them that much. I dislike them, right? But everyone said, what do you hate Audi so much? And I'm thinking, like, I don't really hate them that much. I'll make it look like I do, but I really don't. You know it's what I mean? It's all good fun. The other it's, day. It's, yeah. it's, you know what? They came here. They fucked our small businesses. So me bantering on, on them is I don't care. You've done enough damage. I'm going to try to do as much damage as I can to you on social media. Oh. If you want to sue me, sue me. I own nothing. I don't care. <laughs> doesn't bother me. Well, one thing we've all learned last couple of years is how important it is to support local. Yeah. Yeah, I'm hunting with you. And the quality of the fruit, you go to a fruit and veg shop, it's just so much better than... A good fruit and veg shop, Bevo, shits all over any fruit in any supermarket. 100% agree. And... Coles and Woolies and your Romeos fruit and veg sector is like a million times better than our Audis is honestly not worth pissing on. If it was on <laughs> fire, let it fucking burn. That's how shit it is. Yeah, it's I don't, I don't, I'm trying to avoid it, mate, myself. Yeah, it's garbage. Yeah, in my opinion, absolute garbage. What do you shop at Audi, do you? No, I've been only a couple of times. I've fucking knocked you out. No, I've only been there a couple of times. And <laughs> I wasn't, wasn't really a fan, mate, to be honest. So, yeah, it just tastes like cheap, cheap garbage. Yeah, so, nah, nah, yeah. Yeah, mate, honestly, bro, they're on the top list of shit. Simple as that. Yeah, not a fan either, mate. Yeah. Local all the way. So, local, right. man, local 100%, <laughs> man. We pump our money back into the community, bro. They say they do, they fucking don't. Nah. That's just bullshit. You know, they're a they're, German company, mate. So, yeah. yeah. It's not a bit. I, I love Germany, man. But just, you know, everyone's, oh, you're racist, you're racist. Enough, get fucked. I, I don't like Audi. That's it. The buck stops there, man. That's it. I don't like, I, I love Germany. I just don't like Audi. Yeah, I'm with you there. You know sure. what I mean? Like, fuck. <laughs> All right, next segment, Johnny. You're stressing me Segment out. number five. Talk to me. <laughs> wow numbers. So yeah. at the moment, um, you're going really well with your socials. You mentioned before, you, you sort of set yourself a target. 14,000, which is well and truly over now. Um, where to from here? What what numbers do you want to reach? Do you have like a target? Do you want to get to a million? Do you, know, you have a plan in mind? Um, I'm a little bit disappointed with my Insta followers. Uh, not my followers, like I'm disappointed that they haven't actually gone up anymore. They have. We're at 25,000 on Insta, which is good, but I was expecting for them to go up higher quicker. Um, 
Facebook, like I told you, man, Facebook, we had a couple of videos that went viral in the last few months in UK, Ireland, Scotland. Amazing. And my followers went from 40,000 to 80,000, mate. That, my phone was just fucking off the Richter, man. <laughs> it was going nuts, man. And even, even now, you know, when you open your phone, you got notifications. There's 400 notifications every time I open my phone, regardless whether it's a comment, a like, or a bloody um, a follower. It's just gone nuts, man. Are people want to have photos of you now in your shop as well? It's... Come, man. I, I, man, <laughs> I, I'll be honest with you. Mate, we're getting like, especially now that the borders have opened, we're getting like five a day on an average, man. Amazing. It is, <laughs> it is man. It is mind-boggling it's like wow i can't believe it not only have we got um, i'm getting a lot of requests can you do uh, my husband's birthday today do a shout out for him send me a video <laughs> this that it's like it's weird man i'm there like fucking i'm just a but you're gonna end up on sas australia next i reckon <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, oh, what with corby <laughs> fucking cunt <laughs> sorry pa did i say cunt you did but you mean see you next Tuesday, really, don't you? Yes, so, that's yeah, right. Yes, yeah. see you, well, in, see the you in the non territory. Yeah, exactly. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you know they canned that, eh? Oh, fucking such a great cock. campaign. Yeah. And, um, bro, my followers have gone up. My wife actually, she does TikTok solely, and she's copped 31,000 followers like that on Nominal. TikTok. So that's just going up crazy, man. Our so, so we've got three social sites at the moment, and they're. 25,000 on Insta, 30,000 on TikTok, and TikTok's going up like rapidly, and Facebook's going up crazy like followers. We've got, um, how many did I say? Yeah, nearly 80,000 followers. Yeah, because on, on um, yeah, it's got like followers and people that follow this. So followers is nearly 80,000, and people that follow this, I don't know what the difference is. I need to do more silly videos then by the sounds with Johnny. So. Fucking, it's gone nuts. <laughs> In a nutshell, Bev. It has gone nuts. Gangbusters. Love it. Where do I want to be? I want to have a million followers on Insta. I would love to. And um, I've, look, Facebook, three, 400,000 to 500,000, I would love. That's the goal. That's the goal. And you're on Channel 7 recently. On a serious note, have you had TV networks trying to do interviews like your Sunrise or anyone else? Or? Um, we, we've, been on, uh, we've been on Project. It was on the project uh, when one of my shops uh, got burnt down or just the back part of it got burnt down. And I was mucking around there and it was on Channel 10 News and the project ended up uh, grabbing that pe piece and doing a segment. Uh, I was on a very, um, uh, what's it called? A good rating show in Greece. We actually done a Skype live. Unreal. Yeah, because um, I don't know, mate, a few years back, a lady came and stole a bag of spuds. It was worth two bucks. I posted it. I posted her actually stealing it. And I said, mate, if, if lady, if you're watching it, come back to the shop. I want to help you. I want to help. I want to feed you. You've obviously got kids to take a $2 bag of potatoes. This is at like 7 o'clock in the morning. Right? And, and my, that was another situation where my heart just melted. Yeah. Um, so I tried reaching out to her saying, get, get your ass back here. I'm not reporting you. I want to help you. And it went viral. We got like 1.8 million. Did she million. come back? She didn't come back. She, you know what she came back, Bev? She came back and stole again. Oh, and there's a backup video to it. Actually, the backup video got so 1.8 thousand. So sad when you're trying to do the right thing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, well? yeah. But she, Bev, she had mental issues, man. Um, that broke me in half. But actually, she abused the hell out of me. And I said, you know what, man? Just, just go. Yeah. There's only so much you can do sometimes. There's only so much you can do, man. You yeah. can take the horse to the water, mate, but you can't make a drink. Anyway, cut a long story short. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. Yeah, I was going to fucking mental blank. <laughs> You're talking about the lady and oh, just being on, on TV and stuff like that. TV, so, yeah, yeah. So we, we've, man, we've been, like I said, on that show. Uh, um, uh, it was live. It was live on a Greek show, like prime time, and it was a very reputable show. Um, mate, my Greek's not the friggin' best, so I was a little, <laughs> bit, a little bit all fucked up. But um, that was really good. Um, Project, been on the news heaps of times, man, whether it's for um, controversy or, or for whatever reason, you know, uh, a lot of the times the news crews come there, especially, uh, you know, when the, the needle went in the, um, in the, oh, the strawberries. Yeah. Yeah. So 
Um, my, that, was, that was a really, not a good thing for me, but no one was eating strawberries, bro. So what happened is the grower got in touch with a merchant here and said, listen, man, I know that guy's flat out on social media. I've got 12 pallets of strawberries here in WA. We're going to ditch them. Can he do something with it? Actually, no, they were on the road. They were on the road going to the, to the uh, merchant in Adelaide. So I said, listen, Pat, I said, mate, just give me a minute. I need to put a post up and see what happens. I'll put this post up. And I said, guys, this, 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 and that's happened. I've got X amount of strawberries coming at this price. If I take them, can you help me support the grower to sell them so we get something back? Because they're on their way down from WA. That, and that was just a picture with a caption. It went viral. I don't know how many thousands and thousands and thousands of shares it got, but it went bunters. A day later, we put the, um, the next day I got them, right? Put them in the shop or a day or two later. Mate, we sold like 12 pallets in two days of strawberries. But we're talking, I don't know, there's probably, I don't know how many thousands and thousands of punnets that was. But what would actually bring people to, to put pins that, in fruit? Uh, just, well, that, that was uh, something so to do with the... Um, uh, uh, a disgruntled worker done that. But, um, sad, isn't it? That was, that was sad, but that was huge, man. And this poor bloke, man, had a half a semi of bloody strawberries coming over from WA, man. And I didn't want to, I didn't want to purchase them because I was scared to have them in my shop. But everyone said, absolutely, we will support you. And man, I had, mate, my shop, that was probably, it was like Christmas trade. And, but I made very, very little. I just put handling fees on. The grower got the money back. And, and the grower didn't even, mate, we sold him that cheap. The grower only got back his freight, basically, anyway. Oh, not, not his freight. Very little, but at least he got, he, he would have had to pay dumping fees. Would have lost so much money. He would yeah. have done his nuts, man. So yeah. we sold him. He got paid back something. And he didn't have to pay dumping fees. Another which great good. story about you just with, you know, showing the, the true Johnny. Yeah. The, yeah. You know, yeah. Where, where uh, you're just a lot of people caring. don't see that though, bro, Ben. Yeah. A lot of people just want to crucify you, man. They just want, nah, fuck you. You know, you swear on your ad, you do this, you're a pig. Hey, I'm not perfect, man. I'm not saying I'm perfect businessman. I'm me. And I don't sugarcoat nothing. No. Nah. What you see is what you get. Love it. Don't That's change. It. No, don't I'm change. not changing no. for no one, man. No, don't. I won't change for no Karen, bro. I'll be honest with you. Ever since my whole real campaign with, with all my veg side of things has always been about supporting local growers and supporting local businesses. And ever since I've done that, my everyone's jumped. It's sent a shockwave through Australia because my videos go right around Australia. And I see now everyone more than ever saying local local support local growers support local industries you know what i mean at the same token this shit's happened with covid with china everyone sort of steered away from that you know and everyone's more on let's get back to where we used to be man you don't understand the, the mechanics of it is we're keeping everyone in work we're creating more jobs here if we keep our money here they go to Audi, and let's use Audi for an example. The money, the profits, go back to Germany. There's no two way about that. They pay less taxes here, which means less money stays in Australia. You know? Okay, they create jobs. Yeah, they create jobs. Yes, they buy, off, they buy all their fruit and veg and fresh produce off of Australian farmers, but they fucking drill them to make sure they get that price right. So they're not doing no justice to the community. They're fucking it. And not only that, on top, and I had one of my videos that proved it. He goes, mate, there's always only ever three staff members in a shop. Their shop is 2,000 square meters. Three staff members in a shop of 2,000. Just now, let's reverse engineer this, mate. My shop's 400 square meters, and I've got minimum of six people in there. <laughs> so tell me now, for every shop that they open, they're creating jobs. 
They're creating three jobs per 2,000 square meters, but all the businesses around them, that's got their sort of like uh, retail, regardless of whether it's a Romeo's Coles or a local fruit shop or a local deli, they're fucking. They're closing them all. So per square meter on staff, they've got three people for 2,000 square meters. And you got six for 400. And we got six <laughs> for 400. There you so go. So do the math, man. It's not, you don't have to be Einstein to work it out, man. And if it's not, it doesn't happen today, a slowly, slowly, the businesses are going to drop off. And that's, that's now, that's happening today. That's happening today. And only the strong will survive out of us. In a sense, it's good for me, so to speak. But, okay, there's going to be all these shops closing because, yeah, we're getting busier. But what about the poor bastards that have closed down, man? Exactly. And why, not just because of Audi, but we're talking Costco. You know, we're talking Coles and Woolies. I'm not too fussed about Coles and Woolies, but because they've been there since I was this big. Audi came into the equation when, in my era now, when I had my shop. You know, that's why I've got beef with them. But it's the exact same thing. When Coles and Woolies, don't you remember all those little snack bars that used to be joint onto the houses back in the early 80s? Yeah. Right? A milk bar. Yeah. In every corner, there was a house with a milk bar. They exactly. sold your milk, bread, newspaper, yeah. your lollies. General this, stores. That. General yeah. stores. But yeah. I'm all, right? Yeah. They're all gone now. Why are they gone? Because of the Coles and Woolies. So they sad. fucked that whole industry up, man. And that's what's going to happen now. So... So back in the 80s, early 80s, Coles and Woolies jammed up all your milk bars, your general stores. Now, Audi, in our era now, is doing the same to all the small businesses. You know? So everyone needs to get in their head. Fuck the savings. It's only a small savings. Don't think it's thousands of dollars. It's fuck all. Get back onto supporting local men. Support butchers, support fruit and veg, absolutely. That is it, yeah, man. 100%. That is fucking it. Well, I reckon we'll leave it there, Johnny. Thank you so much for joining us today on Legends of Bevo. Keep up the great work with your videos, mate. And it's, uh, it's great to chat with you. And, and yeah, again, just it's so awesome to, to see a different side of you. Like you mentioned, you see your, the larrikin that you are in your videos, but you've got a real kind heart. And so it's, it's so good to see and look forward to, to following you and down the track, Absolutely. seeing the great things that you're doing, mate. So, no, that's good, yeah. man. Oh, thank you very much for putting me on your show, mate. Pleasure. Absolute fucking pleasure.